Hi, uh, my name is Maria Kakirlaki and I'm here to talk to you about correlative cryoimaging. I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me and um, what I'll do in the next nine and a bit minutes, I'll take you through the uh, cryoimaging that we have available at the correlative cryoimaging beamline B24 at the UK synchrotron diamond light source. So I'll start by describing who we are. I mentioned diamond light source already and you can see a picture here. Uh, we're part of the biological cryoimaging group and our website I've put at the bottom here so it can be accessed for together information on the methods, the people, access routes uh, and anything relevant really. And then I've had a, I have a, a photos of uh, the B24 team and our associates. So I'll go into what we do next. Uh, in a nutshell, we design, we build and we deliver to the users uh, high resolution microscopes. Uh, with an emphasis on correlative cryoimaging and uh, in specific uh, a correlation between x-rays and light microscopy. Um, we are there to help from all the way from sample preparation and design of experiments to um, protocols, expertise, uh, to help with data collection and data analysis and processing. Um, and I've put a few images of the beamline at the bottom, as well as a number of the workflow and some example, uh, example data, but I'll touch upon these in a second. Okay, so the microscopes that we develop um, aim uh, particularly at uh, imaging the ultrastructure of cells. We're particularly interested on how vesicles, organelles, and uh, um, the cytoskeleton organize uh, within a, a cell. Then uh, we look into, as I said, organelles and maybe higher complexes as well as thin slices of tissue. And uh, we aim to combine that with fluorescence microscopy, which delivers uh, chemical information about the localization of molecules within that ultrastructure. We have developed a uh, workflow that starts from uh, cell culture all the way down to the analysis of data. But I wanted to take this slide and focus on the sample holder and our samples. So uh, this, our sample holder our sample holders are TM grids. These are three millimeter gold wafers onto which we grow or deposit cells. And when I say cells, these can be mammalian cells, insect cells, archaea, bacteria, yeast, anything in between. So uh, we, it's quite versatile as to the type of sample that we're looking at, but the geometry is always uh, on a TM grid where we deposit or grow them. And you can see here a finder grid to the right. It's a typical sort of image of uh, cells. These specific cells have been cryopreserved. And this is the next step in our workflow. This is cryoimaging. And for that, our samples get um, uh, vitrified very fast, either through plunge freezing or high pressure freezing, which means that they uh, get cryofixed in vitrified ice. Uh, avoiding any crystalline ice formation, which would destroy um, the sample's integrity, but also would interfere with our imaging. So all of our samples are on DM grids and they have been cryopreserved. preserved. So once we stay set that, we can talk about the microscopes themselves. So I'll start with the fluorescence imaging and in specifically the cryosim, that's structural illumination microscopy. As I, I mentioned already, these, uh, it looks into vitrified samples on, on grids and it uh, has a wide spectrum of uh, illumination. We can register two fluorescent signals at the same time. And of course we look through cells. So we have a set stack of about 12 microns, if not more. So this is really thick for this type of sample and uh, with a resolution of better than 200 nanometers. This is fully commissioned and easily accessible. The cry D-storm functionality is there, but it's still under development, so it's slightly higher risk. Um, I'm showing here uh, the uh, fluorescence of a, a single 175 nanometer bead, fluorescent bead, and the improvement you get with cryosim, just to give people a feeling of how much better things look. But also, I've included a strip from our recent publication in Optica, where you can see the development, the progress, or rather the improvement in resolution uh, from the white field all the way to super resolution. Um, and what you're seeing here is actually fluorescent localization in vesicles in a, in a cell, a mammalian cell that has been infected by a virus. And these vesicles have been ruptured to an extent, allowing a red chlorophore to localize inside them. All right, so the next microscope that I'm going to talk about is the soft X-ray 
microscope, or the technique is of X-ray tomography, we call it cryo 60 And you can see on the right, actually, a movie of a tomogram. So we're going through a cell. Uh, you can see the nucleus very well defined on the top left. And all the little dark spots in there are actually uh, herpes virus capsids. This mammalian cell was infected with a herpes virus. So not only are we, can we track the location of these capsids, we can look at the uh, cytoskeletal, uh, cytoplasmic organization next to the nucleus. So this is the sort of information we can collect. We use the natural contrast at the specific X-rays uh, in use in cells. We're upon carbon uh, rich material absorb heavily, whereas oxygen rich media that surround this biological material does, do not, does not absorb as heavily. Um, the resolution, as I said, we can uh, give up to 25 nanometer resolution in really quite thick samples for this type of imaging and this high resolution. Uh, and I will move from that. I'm, I'm actually giving a reference here, a very view that refers to this method specifically. Okay. So how do we bring these together? Well, as I said, we do have a workflow and I have a little uh, diagram in the middle uh, schematic that shows you that we start with cells on grids, as I said, and then these go through a number of microscopes and facilities within the beam line. These are the lighter colored boxes, but we interface with my microscopy in other areas and in other institutes and within sections of diamond also. Uh, I have on the left, bottom left, two images, two photos of the uh, X-ray microscope on the left and the cryosim on the right. And I've adapted some of the data from uh, our recent publication, this is Kunati de Seta, that you see at the bottom right, where I'm showing you the fluorescent signal, three-dimensional fluorescent signal at the top, where in red are the little vesicles that you actually saw before in the cryosim presentation. And then inside them, the red information, the red um, areas, the red volumes, are uh, viral components. Now, when we introduce this into the X-ray ultrastructure, and I'm just showing you a partial author uh, slice of the data, then that X-ray data becomes much more meaningful. And I'll elaborate a little bit on that. So, uh, first, how we do it, we collect cryosim data, and then once we uh, cryosim data and then X-ray data, in approximately the same area. Remember, this is the same, the same sample moving through microscopes, which is a true strength of our platform. Um, and then we identify the area that we've collected uh, within the fluorescence volume that we've collected X-ray data also. And then we transform this to match the orientation in X, Y, and Z of the X-ray data and correlate them. And you can see we go from um, an X-ray slice here that has information on organelles, nuclei, and the like to the same information, but now decorated with chemical information, extra chemical information on virus localization and vesicle structure. And the way this happens in silico is fully documented in our recent publication, which is down here, and uh, it's well mapped. So uh, the user doesn't have to come up with new methods. We've already done that. So I will focus a little bit on this. It's from the same project. These are cells that have been infected with real virus. You can see here a slice, an X-ray slice with the nucleus, the cytoplasm here, and this is the area of attachment with another cell. The cytoplasm here is really super busy. It has lots of vesicles, lots of multi multivesicular bodies, and whatever is really dark is pretty heavy in carbon. Now, once we superimpose though the fluorescence, now we know exactly where the viral components are, and we can focus on that specific area and describe those physicals that are pertinent to our research. And of course, the difference is three-dimensional. This is two-dimensional, but if I play two movies of the same data, one with just the x-rays, so we're going through the cells, and you're seeing the same thing. This is the slice that I actually captured for the information on the left. But here on the right, it has the uh, fluorescence information that makes it a lot more meaningful than it was before. By themselves, these methods could not have given all that information. When you put them together, though, they become quite powerful. And finally, just a small, um, um, our contact details. Uh, this is the core team, Jidima, Tom, myself, and Elias. Uh, our emails are here and we're available to everybody. Our research highlights, we do have a Twitter feed, so please visit us. And then access routes can be found at Diamond. We have standard access and rapid access. And we'd like to acknowledge everybody who's helped us within our team and across uh, specialist fields across in, in the UK and internationally. Um, and that's it by me. Thank you very much for your attention.
Thank you.